most often people don't leave jobs mm. they leave managers that's our starting point right lucky lucky don't bark <laughs> <laughs> period of those 10 years when city 1016 went from being a, a financially successful radio station to actually becoming a radio station which was a formidable force that's a constant thing you know like sales and marketing and programming and like the end goal is all the different same teams. right different team but the end goal is be the number one player in the market you lost your son who was going to be six soon yes i lost my husband seen life together when you do 10 years with a team you've seen marriages you've seen breakups hookups makeups mm-hmm. <laughs> babies yeah. Yeah. funerals yeah you've seen you've seen life together Welcome. This is Hey Karish and I'm your host and today my guest is all I can say is one of the most special people in the lives of my children and me and anyone who knows me knows my dear friend who is my guest. Hey Fiona. Hey Karish. How are you doing? I'm good. That's the first time I've said hey Karish actually. Yeah, you don't call me Karish. You don't no, even no. call me Karishma half no. the times. I call you Kaishma or I call you Hunji. Yes. And my kids find everything that you say very like authentically amusing. So Isabel, my eldest now calls me Hunji as well. You know your mom once asked me, "Beta, ye Hunji Hunji kya hai?" I said, "Auntie, you're Hunja, na?" <laughs> So, मतलब हुंजी सो माय मेडन लास्ट नेम वाज बेसिकली हुंजन करिश्मा हुंजन एंड देन व्हेन आई गॉट मैरिड टू एड्रियन फर्नांडिस आई बिकेम करिश्मा फर्नांडिस या बट बिकॉज़ आई मेड द मिस्टेक ऑफ टेलिंग यू दिस वंस यू वर लाइक ओह लेट्स मेक अ यू विल बी हुंजी आई विल बी हुंजी फॉर लाइफ नाउ ऑफ कोर्स यू वी हैव नोन ईच अदर फॉर years and years and years yeah. more than that no i'd say 14 Since years 2008 14, 2009 2009 actually yeah yeah so the way we know each other here's the story all right uh behind us becoming you know colleagues and then of course uh, we developed our friendship i remember coming to this country and uh, wanting a career in radio mm-hmm. and i remember wanting my own show when i did come here and i did get interviewed at the arabian radio network i was uh, interviewed for the position of a news reader so i joined as a news presenter but with the very clear and honest opinion and i i told everybody that listen i am going to move to programming as soon as i get the opportunity mm-hmm. and they were like yeah sure 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 and then uh, for a few months i stayed on as a news presenter and then you joined arabian radio network when i joined in 2009 which month in the month of april right so i yeah. have been there since the previous august yeah. Yeah. and so april when you joined you came in as the new programming director of city 1016 every radio station has a programming director who is pretty much the manager of that radio station's content creation right talent production content creation everything works, yeah. everything yeah. so you came on board as that yes and then you heard from somewhere that there's this one child called karishma yeah i'd heard that uh, like karishma wants she's a news and she wants to be talent she wants to be an on air presenter so i'm like yeah 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 okay yeah and then after that i think uh, you know so city was going through this change right the management had changed some presenters had left yeah i think this was when um, kritika and gaurav, gaurav and um, abhijit yes pekka those people were the ones that were on city they were hugely yeah, they famous were big presenters names. and you know i think kritika was on her way out and then there was gaurav and then you know eventually abhijit also left and then pekka also left and so like there was a lot of change happening at city and so i was basically i i inherited tr i always say inherited tr rohit and malvika and then everyone else was new so we were like putting a new team together and there's this girl called karishma and i have to say this you know karishma you came to my desk i think every day for two or three weeks and you'd say fee i've sent you some links and for anyone who knows radio links is when a presenter talks it's called a link right I sent you my links. Uh, will you listen to them? So I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And once or twice, I think you caught me at a really busy time. And I'm like, you know, I listen to it. This girl has persistence, but at some point, she's going to get fed up because, like, everybody is very enthusiastic in the first few meetings, and then it dies down. Like, everyone wants the fame and all of that stuff, but along with that comes like hard work, you know. But you didn't, you didn't back down. 
I remember you kept at it and then I listened to you the first time and the second time, the third time, and the ninth time, the 20th time and the 50th time. And I'm like, hmm, there's a spark. We'll start with that. And you took a chance on me and uh, you pu- pulled me out of the news team, yes. brought me on to on-air programming. Yeah. And uh, from that point on, yeah. I think began my sort of graduation in radio because I had worked in radio back in India uh, to a certain... In World Space, actually. In World Space. And we both worked at World Space back different in times, India. Different, different times, different cities. different cities. You were in Bombay and I was in Bangalore. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we never knew each other in no, India. Not at all, no. But here we meet. Yeah. And uh, so you moved from Bangalore to Dubai. Yes. I had moved from Bombay to Dubai, yeah. Mumbai to Dubai. Yeah. And uh, here with you began my sort of education over the next 10 years. I learned so much, but not only about radio and this is what I love about you is that you taught me about being a good person. You taught me that there is value in goodness because, you know, when we, when we, when you, when you leave your house, um, you do leave as a good person, yeah. you know, I, I did. And I think when you meet the kind of people you encounter in the world, yeah. you sometimes wonder, okay, I don't know if I have been wrong, mm. you know, and mm. thankfully before I changed my mind mm. about how I should be, I met you and you kind of <laughs> reinforced that good is good. Yeah. You know, it's and nice to be good. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so one is I saw a good leader in you. I saw a good person in you. And I saw someone who values the same things that I would things like loyalty, you know, things like honesty, um, which in a corporate setup can very often very easily be lost. You know, Karishma, when I was going to be leader of a team, you know, and I and I thought about this when I was I was a presenter back in India. Right. And I've done like almost every format of radio, every uh, shift, you know, I've pulled in, uh, you know, someone's sick and you pull, you you fill in for them, et cetera, et cetera. You, I've, you've done it all, spent nights in the radio station ripping songs and like literally you do everything when you're in a radio station and especially when it's a setup radio station. Like this is 2002. The first uh, wave, the first of, wave private of, FM. of private FM when it was happening in India. I was with Red FM in Calcutta. And you were one, you were there. The- I was the most one popular. Of- I'm going to say you were, you did Rath Ki Rani. (laughs) My goodness me. I remember my head of programming, national programming head, Vernon. Okay. So my show was going to be called Night Shift and it was an English station. Red in Bombay had launched as an English station and it had, you know, like it had presenters like Jose and Suresh Menon and Mansi Scott and these were like big names. So when Red was going to launch in Delhi and Calcutta, it was going to be an English radio station. So my, my show was going to be called Night Shift. And I remember two weeks before launch Karishma, uh, Delhi, uh, I mean, Bombay wasn't performing well commercially. So they decided, no, we're going to do a Hindi format, not even English, Hindi format radio. And that's it. So two weeks before launch, I think we were, we changed the entire imaging of the station and Vernon comes to me and he's national programming head. He's like, okay, so your show is going to be called Rath Ki Rani. And I was like, What? Rath Ki Rani, like, do you want to kill my career before it takes off? (laughs) And I remember having this conversation with Vernon, you know, like I was young and he was national programming head, but the amazing thing, and and here's what stuck with me with a couple of great uh, leaders that I have met, you know, in my, in my journey is that I could sit with him, national programming head and tell him, you're, you're going to ruin my career. You know, you're going to end it before it starts. And all he told me was fee. Trust me, in three months' time, you'll thank me. I remember three months later, I see Vernon in a cab and he's come to Calcutta from Bombay. I have literally run across the road. He's caught in a traffic jam. I've knocked on the cab door and I'm like, Vernon, my show is doing well. He's like, I told you. So, <laughs> so yeah, sorry, come back to me. I think um, for me, it was very important. Like I knew what I was not going to do. Hmm. So... I think when you're so a leader, you mean when you were a when presenter I was, or uh, when, when you were a team member, you learned enough. I learned enough. I I saw enough and I saw different kind of managers and bosses. Yeah. And the one thing I knew before, when I became a leader was I knew what I was not going to do and what I was not going to be. Yeah. I figured everything else I will learn along the way and I will learn with my team and I will grow because I was a first time manager when I was at City. So I was like, I will not be unkind. 
you know i will not uh, be unfair hmm. i will not have favorites and only favorite like only you know favor a them. favor hmm. a couple of people hmm. i will give people time with their family i will give people leave i will not act like uh their leave belongs to me and i will give it to them when i wish to give it to them so there were just a couple of things i will base this team the the foundation of this team is going to be honesty it's going to be trust and i think when you do that when you decide in your head that these are the things i'm definitely not going to do it kind of falls into place you know you get, you you form a highly effective team that then slowly becomes a high performing team you know so it's very interesting it's very interesting how the 10 years panned out today this episode is uh, the reason to have you here is one to you know to celebrate the fact that you know we share what we share we share life together and uh, mm-hmm. and i cannot leave you out of anything that i do ever Aww. and and more than that i think if there's anyone who has earned their time to talk about management skills it's you if there's anyone who knows how to do a job well when it comes to managing people and managing difficult people because you know on air talent just like any other performance oriented job is all about you know people with their yeah, needs and yeah, desires and etc etc so you've uh, you know you've pretty much uh, from where i stand set the benchmark at that not only me but there was a whole period of those 10 years uh, when city 1016 went from being a, a financially successful radio station to actually becoming a radio station which was a formidable force in terms of the way we came the entire team came for everything together and you made yeah. that happen where no one believed that we were actually all friends you know <laughs> the people wondered the yeah. the you know there's one yeah. community with a radio station which is the listeners or with yeah. you know i think with any business let's mm. just open it up to a larger audience here yeah. with any business let's say we're a business and and the product is us the presenters you know and then there's one consumer base which is the listeners there's another consumer base which is actually clients yeah. right there's another consume there's another base where they're not consumers but they're watching you very closely as competitors and at this period of 10 years and, and this do time do you guys really like each other yes. yeah that's i would Everyone. do they really get along do you as well actually <laughs> like to hang out over the weekends yeah. it must be fake yeah. come on yeah. you can't yeah. all really like yeah. each other true true and it's also true that all of us didn't know each other from years and years ago not at all yeah so you inherited a few people yeah. you hired a few people yes. i was Uh, within the company moved in um you've got to today shed some light on some basic uh you know people management skills that maybe mba schools and institutions are not teaching kids you know karishma i think um in a team there are three things which are super important according to me from my learnings i think it's the boss and the team okay then the boss and the individual team members all right and then it's it's um that individual team members and their relationship and i feel like you you've got to you've got to know all three of them you've got to you've got to be in control of all three of them and when i mean control i'm like you have to have invested enough time in each individual person you know like they they are the three e's i think it's called engage where you when i where i learn about you yeah i learned like this is karishma this is what you likes to do it'll be nice if i know what you like to do on sunday evenings also because when i'm scheduling something for you i i will come to you and say listen i know you're going to do this on a sunday but hey can you do this instead you know some work thing instead the other thing is once i know a particular skill how do i enhance that skill of yours how do i say okay so karishma is a great writer where does karishma fit into the scheme because there are so many people that make a team right you don't want clones of each other everyone can't be exactly the same everyone brings to the table their unique offering which is their usp right as a boss you got to find that so i now i know okay this is karishma i enable you within the work structure to be able to shine with with what is your skill and after that i've got to empower you i've got to be able to say all right uh i know you're at a point now where i empower you and i say go karishma you can do this if if you fail i got you but by then i know you're not going to fail 
right? So I feel when you're bringing a team together, the first thing is I have to invest time in each individual, get to know them personally. And then I'm just like, okay, now I know how to, now I know how to uh, interact with you. The next thing is me and the team, like a leader and the team. You can't give out mixed signals, hmm. right? You can't give out mixed signals. Now, all through my journey, there are these seven C's, you know, I have these, the five star hour and the three this and the four that. So there are these seven C's that I hold very close to my heart. The first C is common goal. In a team, there are going to be a bunch, like a whole bunch of, a bunch of individuals who come from different backgrounds. They are all different. What is the one common thing that ties them all together, that knits them all together? In this case, the need to be the number one player in the market, right? Now, no matter who you are and where you've come from, that's the common goal. So there's common goal. The second thing is cohesion. The moment there's a common goal, everyone wants to stick together. Everyone knows like this is it, you know? The third thing, collaboration, okay? So you start collaborating. I'm like, okay, I'm different. Like I'm the funny one, you're not the funny one. So when we go into an interview together, you will do the hardcore straight questions, Karishma. And I'm gonna add to it by being the funny one. I'll be the funny one. That's how you start collaborating with different, with your peers in, in, in a team, right? After we do the collaboration, there is something called commitment, which I, I hold very dear. It's like, I know you are committed as my peer, as much as I am. So you will, for example, get to an event on time. And then if you forget your lines, I'll cover you. We'll start completing each other's lines on stage. We'll, we'll not let each other down because we're both committed to, again, being the common goal, which is being that number one player in the market. Once that happens, I genuinely believe, and here's the thing, you have to communicate. You have to communicate. There will be times where you hate each other, like a family member, you know, sisters fight, siblings fight all the time. What do you do? You've got to go into a room, scream at each other, shout at each other. Don't hit and scratch because that's not allowed in offices. That's an HR <laughs> issue. <laughs> that's an HR issue. But, but say what you don't like. I was hurt when you did this to me. I'm really upset that you said that. You know, you stole my lines. Whatever it is, communicate. Tell the other person you're unhappy or happy. After you get past these five C's, creativity flows, the continuous need to improve just happens. So I feel like the moment you put this stuff into place, Karishma, in a team, which doesn't happen overnight, it's not magic, it takes a bit, you know, but the moment you have a team that's now uh, coming together as a highly effective team, then you start moving into being this high performance, this team that just wants to achieve, like they want to they wanna break the barriers every time they go out. And I think it's just so important to, again, start all that with trust. Yeah. I think one C that all the seven Cs helped us deal with was conflict or, you know, competing with each other. Yeah. Conflict with each yeah. other. Yeah. Because when all the Cs that you mentioned, you yeah. know, commitment and yeah. coming together and, and connecting with yeah. each other and, and I think what it leads to is us, and you often actually use this phrase, yeah. us firing outwards. Yeah, fire. My, my boss, my boss back then, Steve Smith, he was the COO of ARN and I've worked with him for eight years. And that's a constant thing, you know, like sales and marketing and programming and like the end goal is all the Different same, teams. right? Different team, but the end goal is be the number one player in the market, right? So we'll have uh, difference of opinions. We'll have different ways of doing things. And I remember back then, like Sumantra was the head of sales and uh, Vivek was managing marketing. And we'd all have our different ways of doing the same thing. But the end result, Steve would say, is that we're all working towards the same cause, right? So he'd be like fire outwards because your family, you don't fire at your family. You fight with your family, but you fire outwards. So that's something that I feel when you have a great leader, and that that's kind of DNA. It comes downwards, right? So, Yeah. And, and conflict, again, a team that's performing, that's like a highly perform, like a high performing team, right? Uh, these, it's like an elite group of people, Karishma, who have decided like they're, they're, this, this team's built on trust. Yes. Okay. Completely. So there is no conflict because I trust you. I, you've got me. 
like my boss has got me my team members have got me no no one's going to upstage each other that's not going to happen right so if it's built on trust then you then you realize you're collectively like you're leveraging each other's yes skills yes. you know you're putting it together and you're like if we are amazing together we're going to be number one because there's you can't you can't rush to the finish line and be the only number one person and that's so that's another thing that would very often be talked about is yeah. how if you want to you Win know the race yeah and yeah. if you want to go fast you go yeah. alone if you yeah. want to go long yeah. you know you go together yeah. and i think that was very important and i i i do know for a fact and you know you would have witnessed yeah moments when it was not all Just, everyone's not equal yeah, yeah yeah everyone's like in terms of in in terms of talent karishma everyone's not going to be equal at every point like okay some are going to be better people who interview better some are going to be funny some are going to be fun some are going to be uh, great dancers and great singers right so no one's expecting you're not expected to be a 10 on 10 on everything but the fact that you've made it to the table is because you have a spark now it's for the leader to find that spark refine that spark and put you out there to shine and what would happen in a scenario where one person's beginning to you know break out of that sort of we're going together and someone decides to you know what i'm not going this slow i'm going to go faster i'm going to go alone i think uh, friends is a great example of a tv show that you would often uh, yeah. refer to and you would say you know the reason that friends was as successful and it lasted 10 years was because they all came together, together. Yeah. the first season they got paid different amounts of money depending on who was more popular yeah. then and then they all rallied together and said you know what where the show the six of us so you give us equal pay because we are putting in equal hours and equal effort you know karishma it's it's expected in a team where you suddenly start feeling like you know i am so much more better than this person i should be given so much more privilege than that person and 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 some teams function that way you know like there's uh, evening jocks and morning jocks are considered are called prime time jocks right and they are given a different kind of uh, pay uh, package yeah. Privileges, privileges everything everything is different right yes. and to some people that's okay to me i just felt like i wanted to i had the opportunity with the team i saw in front of me to create something that was unbreakable the easy thing would be just promote the prime times right but i think each one of you today stand for something and that didn't happen overnight we didn't in the first year say okay karishma you're going to be the one that is the uh, the bendit like city girl remember you you're, you're going to be the one that writes stories it's something that we figured out along the way is something you're good at like malvika malvika was not like okay i'm going to start singing tomorrow or you know she was like okay like i know they did love it recommend it because um Sid and Malu loved going out, and you know, so every year or every couple of months, we'd figure something about the presenter, and say it's about building up your strong points and playing down, you know, your weaknesses, right? So if I know your strong points, this, then we're gonna build you there. We, that that's our starting point, right? Lucky. Lucky, don't bark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I I agree with you on that. What is something that you feel like is um, a management lesson that not only applies to radio but applies to businesses anywhere? Maybe a startup that's just recruiting people today. Uh, maybe a business that's been around for years, but a manager who's just taken on the role is not really able to figure out how to deal with the group of people. You got to treat got. people well. I just think you've got to know that your managers got you. How does that happen, though, Fee? Because uh, not every manager is uh, is able to form that connection, and and a lot of times people are oh, go only as far as to make sure their jobs are secure. so taking a risk and putting your especially as a manager putting yourself on the line you have a family you know you yeah. have bills to pay you have yeah. your dreams yeah 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 so putting yourself out there yeah uh while it's great for the organization overall yeah what is in it personally for the manager but that's just it you got to love what you do karishma you know what does that really mean love what you do wake up every day you know I think in in my career I have never even on the toughest of days where I know oh my god I've I've got this presentation I'm going to get grilled they'll fry me today even on the toughest days I've never said same shit different day because 
to me what i what i do is precious like not many people get to do what i do like to work with a great team and then just love what you do so i feel like i'm investing in you because i know you are going to be a part of you know you being successful equals me being successful so i as a manager i've got to have you i've got to how do i empower you and tell you go out there karishma you do what you need to do but if you fail then it's not my problem who is going to who takes that risk you are not going to take that risk right i must enable you to take that risk and say i've got you i'll figure it out you will make mistakes because if you don't make mistakes you're not going to grow so you make mistakes like don't shut the station down make mistakes because <laughs> we both lose our job yeah yeah that too <laughs> so you you yeah. can make mistakes but i've got you i feel you just got to comes back to being kind yeah be kind at the workplace also i think when uh, when we're talking about enabling a team member you know to go out there and now Just do your thing fly you know just yeah. fly the nest now do yeah. your own thing now yeah. i think that also comes with enough training and enough Com- yeah. putting in the oh, yeah, the yeah, work yeah, with yeah, them yeah. Yeah. right you know when someone's ready right yes. because i feel like like you everyone loves the fame and and they love that oh my god people know my name and people scream my name and take photographs and all that's amazing but behind all of that comes that you you know you've got to entertain and be real even when you're feeling horrible right so i think radio is a very it, i think you got to you got to be t- truthful in this business you know there's only that much you can fake right you can you, you got to be true you got to be who you are and a slightly happy version of that on air and you have to know that there are so many people waking up and just it's it and and probably i can change i can make them happy i can make them happy When I was a uh, presenter I had a segment funnily it came to my mind just now it was called make someone happy today. Hmm. Yeah. Where I would just make one person's wish come true. Nice. Somehow like you know it would it would take a lot of did, did this in Radio City Bangalore uh where I was a presenter. And you know sometimes you'll be amazed that sometimes people just want to be able to spend a little time with their spouse. That's what's going to make them happy. Yeah, I didn't ever give anyone a home or a Bentley or anything like that, but it was in the little things, right? At the end of the day, we all actually really want the little things in life, right? But sometimes we forget. Yeah. We forget. What is one of the reasons that you have understood over the years that you would guess is why most people do not lead teams like that because um most often people don't leave jobs mm. they leave managers mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. uh most managers are not able to create or to uh, keep mm. happy and highly productive teams going yeah. Yeah. it takes a lot yeah. you know these are uh, these are great tools you've shared it takes yeah. a lot of practice yes. um so when that doesn't come to somebody naturally mm. um why do you think that is why do you think that that that's not happening I think probably because the person operates from a point of fear right they could be uh fear to go against management uh there could be fear that uh, maybe this person will shine more than me and I'm the manager and I'm supposed to know more you know as a manager you're not you don't need to know more you ne- you need to have an overall idea of the job definitely with the years of experience you learn on the job as well but i would say always recruit people who are smarter than you hmm. in different different ways like you know somebody who's a you don't have to be the best writer on the team right being the boss you you can have a brilliant script writer you can have a person who's great with um with making people laugh you know you can have people who are more talented than you because that's what's going to bring this team together that's what's going to make this this massive production that no one's going to be able to beat so i feel a lot of people sometimes are afraid that maybe you know this person will outshine me like no you're a part of the same team like recognize the person's talent reward them you know something i i learned along the way also karishma is how do you have this one on one relationship mm-hmm. with people i think very important karishma you have to communicate yeah you have to motivate does that make sense mm. you communicate you motivate you have to be able to also delegate like 
I know you're good at this. Okay, you you do this. This person do that. That person do something else, right? Mm -hmm. Because not everyone is expected to rock up to the table and have the same set of skills. Yeah, fair everyone enough. brings with themselves a different set of skills, which is what makes a team unique. That you yes. have different kind of people, right? Yes. So you delegate. After you delegate, you must give feedback. You must give feedback. This feedback has to be 100% transparent. You can't be afraid of hurting people's feelings. You've got to tell them it's not great when it's not great. Yeah. And you also as a manager have to be a little flexible because we know that nothing's ever written in stone. Nothing's ever written in stone. Right. Yeah. I feel when you're, when you're, you listen, you say a little, you listen a lot. You say a little, you listen a lot hmm. in a team. Right. Now, the Indian subcontinent, the work culture that is present uh, from where we come from, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, even in companies here where there's a lot of Indian managers, it's pretty much similar work culture, mm -hmm. wherein uh, there is a sense of that, you know, you have to keep people in their place. <laughs> yeah, because which is the opposite of treat people well. The experience very often is that when you treat people well, they will make sure that they get they get a big head, you know, and then they have big demands and then they don't really put in the amount of work that is needed for the job. So if you keep people in their place and you keep a tight, keep them on a tight leash, then you're able to get more done that way, more value for your buck, more uh, bang for your buck yeah. as Malu's yeah. podcast might say. It. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's rubbish. That's 100% absolute rubbish. And I say that from experience, you don't even keep animals in their place anymore. Animals, when you keep pets at home, yes, they have a spot where they'll go and snooze, but they are allowed to walk around freely at home. The only people, some you put birds in a cage and that's not very nice. So you definitely don't put people in their place. That's 100% wrong. I think if you want people, you want people to thrive, Karishma. You don't want them to just exist at the workplace, right? And especially in jobs like media, like, you know, especially like radio, where these are high performance jobs. These, you know, talent come in every day. They perform Right. And they're being honest. Like you can say now you have a headache or you can say now you're getting married or you can say now, you know, it's it's not like how it was before. You've got to hide who you are and you have a different radio personality. Everything is real. What do you mean? Keep someone in their place. I feel like, again, a high performance team is one that thrives in a place where there's trust. The foundation has to be built on trust when they trust you. They will trust each other because you they know you've got them. And that's when you see fireworks. That's when you'll see the magic. When I was recruiting people, I'd always try and hire somebody who had who was as passionate about radio, like had another passion. Right. So I remember when I was hiring um, our second music manager, Gopika, she came to the interview with a with a, a big wad of butter in her bag. Right. She was going to go bake a cake and, you know, funny story. But the point is she loved baking as much as she loved radio. Hmm. So I feel everyone's you got to find people who also have that one thing that they're crazy about Why? other than work. Because Why? when when work doesn't go well, hmm. you will crash and burn. This the, it, work can't be the only thing you do. You've got to love something else as much as you love work. It could be anything. It could be painting. I, I love wood, Karishma. If you leave me in a wood shop, I will look at the grain of wood and feel it in a paint shop. Like that's something that I completely love as, as much as I love radio, right? So I feel like coming back to your question, we've, we've derailed about putting people in their place. Absolutely not. I feel people for people to thrive, they've got to feel safe. They've got to know you've got them. And the only way that can happen is if they trust you. So we're coming back to be kind at the workplace. Um, and you'll see fireworks and in a good way. Your, your stars will shine. Yeah, yeah. I think kindness is not a priority. I think, uh, I think we can safely say that. Um, not only in the workplace, it's not a priority in general in the world we live in today. Um, I think people think being the best and people think that, you know, being at the top, all of these things are are what people are seeking at the cost of niceness, kindness, because those things can make the day feel great. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but do they have a value in the long run? Yeah. 10 years of kindness mm. 
does it get you anywhere in life mm. is the question mark you yeah, know it does i think you have great stories and great experiences then to pass on to your children and that's very important like what are we doing all this for we're doing all this for because of course for ourselves we're doing it for our family we're doing it for our kids and i feel like if i were to teach my kids anything you know i mean they they will learn the ways of the world and they will learn how to be street smart and they will fall a little and they'll stand up again and and that's all fine but i feel the core of everything for me comes down to you know you've got to work smart yes and then just imagine if you were also nice while you were at it that would be that would be good right yeah that is interesting i feel like it's also about the legacy you leave behind uh cuz we remember people for the way they made us feel yeah isn't it yeah. um so yeah. very often you'll hear people talk about how there was this really nice client they had yeah. or this really nice boss yeah. they once had yeah. um and that's just yeah. it that's the difference that someone can make you know karishma one of my bosses nisha nisha is now uh, the coo of red fm mm-hmm. and she is the director and ceo of red fm and she handles some what red has what 48 58 stations the last i remember she back in she was the station head at radio city every presenter would come hang around talk to her and uh, she had a way to make you feel good there's something about her and now when i see her on instagram there's like a whole bunch of people doing exactly the same and and a lot of people can look at it and think oh they're sucking up to her because you know she's that is one of the questions there when you are a manager though isn't it relevant to ask this question that you know you everything you say will go whatever you say is right yeah, but aren't you wise enough to know that's why you're the leader so you are like you know kids is that though you know, taken kids for learn granted how, kids learn how to manipulate can, first yes i agree yeah. can you as a manager believe that because i am smarter than or there's some reason that's why i'm the manager therefore i must already know whether someone's being genuine or not or is that something that as a manager that you, you learn, learn i think you learn along the way look mm. you can be fooled a couple of times right but then you know when someone's trying to manipulate their way to get something from you or whether they're being genuinely nice and they genuinely care about you look i'm not saying everything's hunky dory and everything is what you see is what you get no absolutely not because Sometimes, trust is hard fought yes 100% but i feel over time if you're going to be a leader that's one of the things you learn you learn you know when someone's manipulating you to get their way or someone just giving you good advice Hey fi, I don't think this is going to work because of this this reason. You got to listen. You don't have to accept it at that point, but you got to listen, right? This is very interesting. And as I'm going to say, it, you're going to think of the people that fall into this category, okay? So they are the know-it-alls. The first category. Know-it-alls. They know everything. You say, you know, guys, we're going to do this. They're like, "Yeah, of course. I did this. I did this there. I did this here. Yeah, yeah, of course, definitely." Like they know everything. Then they are the shy guys, the quiet ones, okay? These are the guys they take it all in they are the sponge they're silent they listen they observe they'll get the job done they they are not under performers they're the silent ones and then they are the the dominators the ones who believe in world domination i will do everything on this team okay i will even tell the team how it's done before the boss tells the team how it's done and they are the ones who sit on the fence the next lot of people who sit on the fence <laughs> not very you know motivated you you got to really dangle a lot of carrot to get them going and stuff like that so look as a leader you already know and as i'm talking you already are fitting people into you know the, into those categories so you know you know when you're getting advice from the quiet ones the ones who got your back the dominators just want everything want all the events <laughs> right the know it alls just want to say i've done this and i've done that and that's okay and the ones who are lazy bums are we allowed to say bums you said yeah, it now i've said it now. now the lazy bums you just got to even the lazy bums have sparks that need to be found yeah. and the fact that they're there they've done something to get your 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 attention so right? something that's been uh, you know talked about in the last few years um maybe 5 7 years now is quiet quitting have you heard mm. of it have you heard mm. of loud quitting where mm. people are not even hiding the fact that they're they, not they interested leave. in doing the job anymore yeah yeah um what as a manager would be uh, the the tools to deal with or to handle handle these situations talk to them 
nobody quiet quits overnight yeah nobody even loud quits over they don't decide tomorrow morning i'm going to now just say i'm not interested in this job anymore mm-hmm. i feel it's a build up of time over time where you feel you're not being heard uh, you're not valued people don't people have stopped recognizing what you bring to the table right and that's when you quiet quit you're like you know what there's no point let them do what they want i'm i'm fine i'll just take my money and go home mm-hmm. everyone's allowed to feel that way everyone feels that way at some point because sometimes you can get lost in the loudness of everyone else right which is why like brings me back to those five kind of people on the team you know you have to know that your quiet ones will be sometimes the ones who will quit on you and you don't even know they're unhappy and you don't even know as a manager i feel when somebody is not performing more often than not it's something that's happening in their personal life that you aren't aware of because these are jobs which are like you know if you're not performing i'll see it right now if you've done a bad show today karishma i'll know something's wrong with you i'm not just going to say you're lazy no because i know you right i have that relationship already as your manager so i know there's something wrong and i i remember um there was a point where you know there was a family member of mine in rehab and i was sitting at a meeting back in india and uh, everyone was talking about a promo karishma and i i couldn't like i couldn't i was trying really hard and i couldn't contribute and my boss called me and said you were lazy in the meeting you know and it broke my heart i was and and there is again you know these little lessons when when i am the boss i'll never be that person that's not what i'm going to do i won't be that right and i and i looked at the person and i said do you know that i have this 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 happening in in my family and i've worked so hard and the first time i don't perform you think i'm being lazy right and that was such an eye opener to the person and for me i was like when i when i if i ever get to be a leader i'm not going to just think my team's lazy i'm going to go in there and i'm going to find out what's wrong with the person you have to talk you have to talk so there's also jobs wherein managers are not really required to or uh, performance is not directly related to how much personal interpersonal relationships the managers and the team members have there's those kind of industries as well mm-hmm. where it's purely it's technical it's just about getting the job done and and yeah. really just that and uh, you know yeah there's value in being nice yeah there's value in being kind yeah. uh, what are some other you know practical tools that can help a manager get their team to perform better um you know and and incompetence you know how how does one deal with that i feel look there are certain industries where yeah like uh, you don't need to know the person personally right and that's fine that person also doesn't want to know you personally <laughs> <laughs> and they're all happy and they're all happy yeah. and that's really fine like you know but ours is an industry where performance is directly related to relationship yeah it is like yeah. you don't scream at somebody for example when they are on air you wait for the show to be over you sit them down you say great show by the way and whatever the problem is there's a some things like you know you you mm-hmm. don't cut you know you don't do a cut in the middle of a movie and go tell an actor oh by the way i didn't like the way you treated me yesterday or you've done something wrong you know what i'm saying i'm saying yeah. i think it's important to manage tempers including your own including your own yeah mm-hmm. because they everyone's looking up to you yes you are the leader yes um how do you how do you deal with people who are not performing for for me it's like there are one or two warnings that i i want to make sure 100% you're not performing and then you're out over and out that's it right um has there been a challenging situation for you as a manager yeah danny then <laughs> you you didn't know what to do because you didn't experience it ever before in your life and you were like oh this is something new what did you do how did you learn yourself uh, teach yourself the lesson you needed to learn at that point i think again there 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 have been points where i've been like okay you know i've i've made the wrong recruitment choice right i can't sit with that i've got to like go to my i've gone to my manager and said listen hey i think i made a mistake i don't think this person's a good fit for the team and i've had to be able to be honest and say um it was different when i let's say when i interviewed the person or when i when i heard the person do a demo and now what i'm seeing is a completely different 
person, right? You've got to be honest, go to your manager and say you've made a mistake. There's there's no other way to do about it. You you can't keep a, a non-performer in a high a uh, performing team you right know, you can't right yeah. you can't have a non performer there then what do you do you've yeah. got to go in there and fix it as heartbreaking as it may seem and as difficult but i think for the greater good of the team you've got to you got to be honest you got to do that i think that's that's great advice we've talked about hiring we've talked about firing we've talked about you know retaining maintaining yeah. uh which is which is great i also uh i think i need to address the fact that uh you were laid off during covid oh yeah. sorry this is pre covid pre covid so yeah. it was a 2019 2018 i don't remember i think 18 2018 yeah i yeah. remember i had uh, the influenza and uh, my kids had the influenza and we were all sick and i got a a message from work or something saying that you know you'd been made redundant and it was um, it was shattering uh, for a lot of us and uh, i think that the 10 years the almost 10 years that we'd spent together with yeah. you yeah. uh you know we had become family and yes. we were in and out of each other's homes our children were all born around the same time um, yeah. <laughs> you know you lost uh, your son uh, who was going to be six soon yes i lost my husband who was you know i think we're all just yeah way to alakesh lost his dad deeply yeah. connected yeah. yes at this mm. point um we had felt a lot of pain for each other yes. we had we'd, we'd seen life together when you yeah. do 10 years with yeah. a team yeah you've seen marriages you've seen breakups hookups makeups yeah. <laughs> babies yeah. Yeah. funerals yeah. um yeah you've seen you've seen life together so yeah. did you go through a phase of wondering if you had not been a good enough manager or if everything you knew about being nice and being kind and all the things that you brought yeah to the table yeah. were they were they actually did you question that never never <laughs> i am unapologetically who i am okay if i were to do it again i will do it exactly the same way because i feel like um you know management change new people came in we we didn't see the same vision we were i was not aligned with that vision i didn't agree with that vi- to that vision and that's fine that's a job it's it's over i i still have relationships with people on the team and that wouldn't happen if all i wanted to do was be the boss you know like i said we invested in each other and would i do anything differently no absolutely not i think there comes a point in your career where you know like look i bring this to the table and i'm very confident because i have the years and years and i'm always learning i i don't ever think i know it all yeah. I, i don't think we ever know it all no. we're always evolving and learning new things and learning how to be more tactful and learning how to you know um work our way through office politics and and all that's there but i think you you can't change you the core of you can't change so the core of me is always going to be this i'm always going to believe in kindness i'm always going to believe in honesty and i will always like have a team that shares my vision i think that's what happened at city you know when we were starting off hmm. like i hired you loki said uh, megna pari pari yeah. tarun mariam yeah. Yeah. right um i inherited tia rohit jaikaran and malu and then there was govin the yogi gopika rubina you know so i feel like Yo- yogi yogesh yes yes yogesh right are uh, the current music manager so for me these were not just names and numbers you know uh the like i, I remember priyanka ra hr back then uh, funny story I must share this with you like she tell me this is the bracket where you can hire this is the minimum you can offer them and this is the maximum you can oh, offer them we're talking about wait, wait 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 okay, okay nice <laughs> and um, i remember um i will offer the person the maximum i'll say this is it don't ask me for even one dirham more and then she would be so wild with me she'd be like fee you can't do this that's not the way you know, you negotiate and i'm like listen we got to make them happy this is it they're not getting a, a salary hike for another 2 years give them the maximum pay they will perform well they will be happy they are happy i'm happy you happy organization makes money we're all happy so she would be like fee you can never negotiate i'm like yeah maybe i could never be in sales <laughs> because i know you personally i think i can take this uh, moment to talk about one of the most tragic events of our lives uh 2016 18th of march uh we were all 
Uh, it was the second day of Toifa in yeah. Dubai. We had yeah. just all attended the first day the previous night. We had all hosted there. The technical awards. Yes. And then the next day were the main awards night. And uh, I remember we had outfits ready from Anjali K. We had hair and makeup happening in your house and all of these things. Just magic, really. And uh, except that Sunday morning, 18th of March. That Friday morning. It was, oh, so yeah. this was when Thursday, fr uh, Friday, yeah. Saturday used to be the yeah. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. not Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Um, so that Friday morning, we lost, you lost yeah. um, your firstborn yeah. child. Yeah, that was something. That was... Uh, that was really something like I remember the previous night was was the technical awards. It was the 17th and we had worked so hard on Toifa for almost a year. Right. First of all, to negotiate that deal with the Times of India and get it exclusively for City, you know, uh, despite Mirchi at that point being with Abu, ba Abu Dhabi Media and, uh, and Times their of sister India concerned runs, yeah, runs, you know, Mirchi they, they, in, in, India. in India, like yes. they're, they're a part of the group. Right. Yes. So that was a big win for City and uh, we'd been gearing up for it and the 17th was the technical awards I remember so clearly the whole team was there and it was finally that day where we relaxed a little before the big one right which was the 18th and uh, uh, at home there was hair and makeup happening like you said and Dylan my son and Phil my husband they were having a barbecue at home uh, with my little one with Kristen who was small and uh, we got back really late that night I think 3 34 in the morning because I think that was the time Shah Rukh and Salman were perform were practicing on stage and you know I think Sid stayed back for that and stuff like that and I woke up in the morning and Dylan was going to church with Phil and um, I remember sleepily putting on his, the shirt, his, the, the buttons, buttons of his shirt and um, Phil made him breakfast and I put him into the car and I made eye contact with him. And everything in me told me, take him out of the car. Don't, don't let him go. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's just me feeling guilty that I'm not going to be there at night and stuff like that. So... I let him go to church that day and then he didn't come back home. So that was, that was like, I think a big part of my heart left me that day and didn't return. So it's okay. That's not okay, but it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I can only tell you that it is heartbreaking one to lose a, one of our children, any one of Absolutely. No. Yeah. And then to see someone that you love so deeply in so much pain yeah. and you can't do anything to take that away. You know, I can do nothing um, to, to make you smile, to give you hope because that's all you needed at that point. Um, I, I could do nothing for you when you lost Edu. Uh, Dear, dear friend for me and Phil. Who I recently found out you loved more than you loved me. Phil and yeah. I did love Edu a little <laughs> bit <Fine>. more. <laughs> I do love Edu a little bit more. You came back to work. I think a lot of people had that wonder uh, if you were going to be able to, not only were you going to come back to work, but can she now do what she's been doing all these years? Is she now going to be just as focused yeah. Just as committed, the, you know, the long hours that were needed and everything else. Like, is she going to be the same person? Yeah. And I think one, that is an unfair expectation. Mm -hmm. But two, you actually came back just as strong and powerful as ever. Because uh, like you earlier said in this conversation is that you can't change the core of a person. And at core, that's who you are. You're passionate about something, you're going to do it with that same level of commitment. What was the change? Was it, was anything different from that point on for you? I had a great support system in my friends and family at home. And uh, Kristen, my uh, my eldest daughter, was I think two and a half, you know, two and a half or three. Uh, so I had... She was the younger one then. She was the younger now one she's then. she's the eldest. Yeah, now she's the eldest, yeah. And um, I think I needed to come back to work. First, I thought I was not coming back to work. And then Phil, my husband said, no, you've, you've got to go back to work. And if you don't want to be at work, then you don't go to work. But you've got to go back to work and see if you want to be there. And I remember coming back to work. And the day I came back to work, it was exactly one month. It was 
uh, ARN's business club. It was ABC. And I walked straight into the hotel. And I remember everyone, like, I was getting those looks like, you sure you want to be here? You want to go back to work? You want to sit down? Can we pull up a chair for you? I was hard, but... I took it one day at a time. That's the only way to do it. That's and, the only way to do and, it. And, yeah. you know, um, we love Phil, your husband. And yeah. I think he is just such a fantastic individual uh, in the way that he is completely unassuming, yeah. unthreatened, yeah. you know, just not... I just love him. Yeah, uh, He's my whole life. He's yeah. my, build, my whole life is built around this human. And, and, <laughs> and I think it's the same for him, you know, yeah. he's... Everything to him is you and the children and, and he's never felt like, you know, sort of, you know, no, I like that he said, no, go to work and see how that makes you feel and yeah. then decide. And then decide. That yeah. kind of wisdom, yeah. that kind of uh, sort of, you know, knowing that, you know, my wife might want to still go back to work yeah. and that might actually be a, a, good, a good thing, thing for her. Yeah. Um, you know, letting you decide not yeah. just letting you but knowing yeah. that yeah you you decide yeah you decide not that he's allowing you not that he's allowing it happen he's just built like that where he just lets things be let things happen and when you're happy he will be happy if something's not making you happy yeah i, I think when when you're going through such immense grief and in when you're going when you're in so much darkness you know you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. So you've got to walk through that darkness for a while. And suddenly you'll see the light. Right? So I feel that's what we did. You know, then Kate, Caitlin was born. My daughter was born after that. And uh, now Elijah is three years old as well. And I feel grief is something where you you just learn over a period of time to manage it better. It doesn't go away. Yeah, You know, I feel like when I sit, I still haven't passed the 18th of March, right? Yeah. It's, it's like it just happened. I can feel, I can feel all those moments. But I feel like I just know how to manage the pain better. And I remember sharing this with my friend Dina, who lost her son as well. And she was like, I don't know how you did this when she went to work, she went back to work after losing her child. She's like, I don't know how you did this. And she had this conversation with me saying that I was too scared to even talk to you, reach out to you back then. I didn't know what to say mm. and completely different conversation. But when someone's grieving, just tell them I'm here. Sometimes you don't need to say anything. You know, you just need to tell them I'm here. And I had a lot of people telling me that they were there. In fact, you know, Karishma, and this is the stuff I'll always be. I, I, I believe in loyalty. I believe in loyalty. And I remember when this happened for an entire month, my whole team was in my house at different times of the day. I, th I don't know whether you all had a shift or something, but there was someone in the morning, there was somebody there in the afternoon, and there was always someone there at night, just doing something or the other. I feel like when, you know, when you think back on those moments, you're like, wow, I did something right. Yeah. You know, coming back to what we were discussing, which is like, wow, I did something right that they took the trouble. They, they cared enough to show up every single day. And this is not just the first week or the second week. This was till I came back to work. Yeah, there was always someone there, either playing with Caitlin or someone at the stove, or and I was like, "Wow, I got to do this for them." Mm. You know, I can't, I can't walk away from this now. <laughs> so I, that's what I, I think. It just, just having that yeah. network of people. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think there's just so much we can go on and on and on talking yes, we about, can. We and can. we do actually, do, <laughs> we do talk a lot when we are just hanging out. I love you. I've loved you and I will always love you. I may not. Does Chandra know about that? But about uh, this? This love affair. Wait, that wait. We hear have what I'm about to say yeah, after yeah, this, yeah. which is that I may not wish you on your birthday. I may not remember that your birthday has come and gone, but I love you. Just, just for the record, you didn't wish me uh, last year. 2023, you didn't wish me. Isabel wished me, you didn't. But it's okay. I think I did, but we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> didn't. Like all good friends. <laughs> 
So, I put yeah. it down in my Excel sheet. Oh gosh. You know, we have a friend who has an Excel sheet, of right? Of all the people that did wrong to him. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah, you know that it was wonderful um, to have you as the leader um, that I sort of learned so much from. And I think you've said you've, you've left a legacy that was still, you know, so much uh, in, in enriched by. And uh, so many of us, um, you know, still hold on to so many of those values that you left uh, behind. And then, of course, the fact that um, we I think that, you know, life comes a full circle, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm waiting to see what you're going to do next. And I'm waiting to see what you're going to create next. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you, Karishma. I have to tell you that, um, you know, from do you remember that party we threw for you? as your welcome party in Malvika's place. The one that I didn't show the up to The one that you didn't show up to. And then we had to call you and say, Karishma, this is your welcome party. And then we made you do like a pole dance with the broom. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, embarrassing. I feel like from that moment to now, that moment was super fun. And I loved that Karishma back then. I love this Karishma now. I feel like, wow, Karishma, what a journey. What a journey it's been for you. And I'm so, so, so proud of you. Like if anyone is resilient, I feel your name should be Karishma Resilient. <laughs> Hunji. I forgot. <laughs> Hunji. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I think I, I have to say this has been, uh, you know, a very, very special episode to me. My bestie, that's what Izzy uh, calls Auntie Fee, is Mama's <laughs> bestie. So yeah, my bestie Fee, and I really hope you enjoyed getting to know her. She is one of the most well-known radio personalities back in India, even here in the UAE. You know, she's come, she made her mark and... This is going to be just an exciting next chapter in your life yes. that we're all looking forward to. So thank you for coming home thank again. You. Thank you for being on the show. I hope you enjoyed it. I loved it. Like you're really good. I hope this becomes a big TV show. Please sell my show. Get me sponsors. Yes. I can make money out of this. Yes, definitely. 100%. Okay. Let's go meet some people. <laughs> Let's go do that. And you guys, make sure you come back for another episode of Hey Karish. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, you know, do those basic things. And mainly, we'd love to hear from you about people you want to see on this show. Um, comments that you've got for fee, you know, please, please do tell us what you thought of this episode so that we can make towards uh, bringing you. We can do more and bring you more and and bring you exactly the kind of stories you want to hear. Thank you guys so much and take care of yourselves. Hi, my name is Fiona and you just watched me on Hey Karish. Don't forget to like and I forgot the rest. <laughs> share and subscribe. Share and subscribe. Yay. Like, share and subscribe. You said it so nicely. <laughs> <laughs>